Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It's Monday, November 18th, 2013. I'm Leanne McAdoo, and here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, are TSA detention pods coming to an airport near you? Then, documents confirm police access to real-time DHS cameras. And even Slick Willie wants you to keep your health plan. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Oh, how you doing? I'm your friend, you know. <laughs> I love you, Harlem. I love black people. Uh, I'm going to bomb Serbia. It's liberal. Well, just to ensure that you are totally conditioned and ready to obey absolute authority, the TSA is now rolling out new detention pods. Another example of just how we are being treated like prisoners in our free country, travelers are now being forced to bottleneck through these detention pods as they leave the airport terminal. A robotic voice gives instructions to wait inside the pod until a green light is shown and then the door opens. Once travelers exit the pods, they are unable to re-enter the terminal. Now, the justification for installing the pods is that they replace police or security guards who would normally stand at the exit therefore saving money. But we know that that is a bunch of baloney because the TSA admits in its own words that there is no real threat. What this whole thing is all about is just absolute acclimation, brainwashing, conditioning, so that you'll be okay with groping hands of the TSA and total authoritarian control. There are no terrorists. We reported last month um, engineer and blogger John Corbett that he's had ongoing litigation over the constitutionality of the TSA security practices, and he exposed how the TSA admits that there is no evidence to support giving up our civil liberties. A section that was censored reads of what evidence the government possesses to rationalize that we should be so afraid of non-metallic explosives being brought aboard flights. The answer, there is none. As of mid-2011, terrorist threat groups present in the homeland are not known to be actively plotting against civil aviation targets or airports. Instead, their focus is on fundraising, recruiting, and propagandizing. And in fact, he said it's been about 35 years since an actual situation where someone was trying to bring explosives into the airport has actually even occurred. So the threat is not real. So why are they imposing these security measures? Don't you feel like every day we're just being pushed and prodded a little bit more into compliance? Something's definitely up. And then we also reported in October about the TSA's expanded screening process and how before you even get to the airport, they're already accessing private and government databases to, to get information about you, like your car registration, your employment, and so much more. But now, just to remind you that you are a prisoner who has got to be subjected to these detention pods and you must obey and control. But what about the obvious thing here? We saw it during the LAX shooting, um, in order to avoid gunfire, hundreds of people were stampeding for the exit. So what's gonna happen if something like that happens or if there's a fire or some other threat and people need to stampede to the exit, that's gonna cause an obvious bottleneck, obvious problems, but also, why do you have to be subjected to a detention pod to leave the terminal? Haven't you already gone through enough TSA checkpoints? By then, you're, I mean, you're, you're exiting the plane. But the TSA isn't the only agency that's tracking your every move, of course. Last week, we told you about the expansive mesh network surveillance grid that's in Seattle. And the police there, there said, oh, you know, we just forgot to turn the cameras off, but we weren't really actually using them. Well, now we had just reported on a new file that's entitled the Police Video Diagram. And this proves that police officers have the ability to access and control live video feed from the city's surveillance cameras, all from the comfort of their police cruisers. So these cameras that track your cell phone and then provide up to your last 1,000 locations and are the ultimate profiling tool, cops now they don't even need probable cause to track you. They don't need a warrant, they don't need permission. 
Um, basically, they can just decide that they want to see what you're up to and then turn these surveillance cameras so that they will um, track you and the police can find out what they want to know. And a Seattle police spokesperson said after we exposed those documents last week, they would begin deactivating the program awaiting public feedback. But reports as of yesterday show that the cameras are actually fully operating. And I'm sure they're not going to give up the authority to sur surveil the public in that way. I just, I don't believe it. And multiple agencies have access to these surveillance cameras, but what I'm curious about is who has access to the cameras that are spying on you through your Xbox? The new Xbox One set to be released later this week can see your penis. That's the shocking discovery made by Fast Company Design's Mark Wilson. After uploading a video analysis of the new console's features, Wilson wrote, quote, While I'd intended to post the above tech demo of the improved Kinect from Microsoft Research, I noticed alongside the intricacies of a hoodie and jeans, and there's no graceful way to say this, a dong. That's right, the Kinect system's infrared camera is now so sensitive that similar to a TSA millimeter wave body scanner, it shows a clear outline of your genitalia. Wilson also reveals his embarrassment in noticing how the system picked up the outline of his own penis during Xbox One testing at Microsoft's campus in Redmond. Taken on its own, this might be easy to dismiss, but when you consider the fact that Microsoft, maker of the Xbox, was deeply embroiled in the NSA wiretapping scandal, allowing the snooping agency backdoor access to spy on users of its services, things begin to get unsettling. The user will not be able to power on the new Xbox One without first enabling Kinect and standing in front of its camera. The system also requires that it be connected to the internet at least once every 24 hours. The device will also track your eye movements to record which ads you watch, as well as using its array of microphones to enable voice interactivity and distinguish your voice from other people in the room. So I guess we just have to trust that Microsoft won't record and pass on the audio of our conversations to the NSA, just like it did with the data of other individuals who used its Microsoft services. Reports have emerged today that Nambler, the North American Man-Boy Love Association, have put in a massive pre-order for the new Xbox One, exhausting current supply. Okay, that's a joke, but you see where I'm heading. Wilson himself notes that whereas Microsoft, aware that children could be targeted by paedophiles, have banned topics or content of a sexual nature on its gamer tags and profiles, they don't seem to be as concerned about the fact that their console has the capability to perform a rudimentary strip search of all its users. Check us out on Twitter at twitter.com slash prisonplanet. I'm Paul Joseph Watson reporting for Infowars.com. And if having cameras everywhere and the police being able to track your every move through your cell phones wasn't enough to remind you that you are a captive living here in the United States, now the law enforcement uh, ankle bracelets that you see, the GPS ankle bracelets, they also have built-in phones to transmit audio. An attorney uh, filed a motion to have his client's ankle device removed when he noticed that it was remotely being turned on during their private meetings. During the court hearing, he placed a GPS ankle bracelet on the podium and made a call from the device to a technician of the Secure Alert company, that they're the ones that manage the audio. So the technician testified through the GPS bracelet as it was on the podium that yes, the device can in fact be turned on without a warning and record and transmit audio. But you might be thinking, oh, you're a criminal. You don't have the expectation of privacy, but whatever happened to um, innocent until proven guilty? And it is America. We do still have attorney-client privileges. So this is actually kind of shocking and a little bit scary that they can tap into your private conversations with your attorney without warning you. Well, stick around because coming up next, I'm going to have the latest dire warning from doctors regarding something that you're probably letting your kids do every day. We'll be right back.
My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the purest, cleanest, absolute best form of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities. That is, taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden, even in the toughest times. We also have starter varieties of the deluxe seed packages for fruit, salad, salsa, peppers, medical herbs, and more. Go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. Welcome back. Well, in defiance of our dear leader, the House of Representatives passed the Keep Your Health Plan Act last week. The legislation would allow millions of Americans whose health care plans were canceled under Obamacare to renew their plans for one year. And 39 Democrats broke rank and sided with the Republicans in order to vote for this GOP-written bill. But this bill isn't enough for former President Bill Clinton, who despite having supported Obama's Affordable Care Act, he said last week that the federal government shouldn't use minor changes in existing plans as an excuse to cancel existing health care plans. He said, I personally believe if it takes a change in the law, the president should honor the commitment the federal government made to those people and let them keep what they've got. Now, Obama issued a fix to this health care law last week, saying that he would allow people to keep their plans for one year, even if they don't meet minimum requirements of Obamacare. His fix was instantly criticized, of course, because he never even met with the insurers to make sure that this would actually be be a good fix and in the best interest of Americans. He, he met with the insurers the following day to talk about his fix, but he was also criticized because people say he just doesn't have the authority to wave his hands and decide that that's how the bill is gonna read now. Did you vote yes because you think that the president didn't go far enough? Uh, I voted yes. Perhaps that was part of the reason, but the main reason was I'm not sure he had the legal underpinning to do what he did. Not only is a president barred from writing or rewriting laws, he has to enforce them exactly as Congress has written the laws. He can't just wave an inconvenient part of the law just to fix a problem that he's created. But, of course, if he can find out a way to do that, to say that the law is unconstitutional, then he might be able to work that out. But he's always reminding everyone that the Supreme Court upheld the Affordable Care Act. So, there you go. But, of course, the polit political timing with this is crystal clear because it's going to stop millions of people from being dropped from their insurance who would then call their representatives and say, hey, I'm not going to reelect you <laughs> next year. But of course, now, that'll, that'll have to wait until after the 2014 elections. Very convenient for the Democrats there. So things aren't really looking that good for Obama. Even Kanye West has turned on him. <laughs> he called into a hot 107.9 this morning, and he said that he's over Obama. And he said that even thinking of the president at this point is just lowering my priority of thinking. The rapper suggested that Mr. Obama had used him as a foil for political purposes. 
he wouldn't do that. He is an upstanding member of society. When Kanye West is hating on you, you know you have dropped to a new low. Well, parenting these days is a little bit of a different ball game. Most kids are more tech savvy than their parents, and there's all kinds of toddler tablets that are encouraging kids to be totally tapped into technology. Well now, doctors are warning that children under two should avoid all screen time entirely. Doctors and therapists fear that too much time on touch screens could cause long-term damage. Uh, occupational therapist Lindsay Marzoli said, if they are always on the iPad and not actually doing those paper pencil activities that they should still be doing, those muscles are going to remain weaker. Six-year-old Nolan Ulrich, who is part of occupational therapy and he's working on hand-eye coordination and finger movements like grasping and pinching, as well as balance and posture, which are all problems that kids can develop if they spend too much time with touch screens instead of running, jumping, building, and drawing. <laughs> what happened to playing? Marzoli said that what we're seeing is a lot of children coming in with some motor delays, some decreased muscle strength in areas. So that is pretty incredible. I know just from doing my own work that my, you know, we all kind of hunch over and I'm just like the future with what's going to happen with these kids. We're, our society is devolving. We're going to be like degenerate lurches in 50 years. <sighs> Get outside and play. Well, <laughs> stick around because coming up we're going to have an excerpt from the Alex Jones show. James Teague was uh, not only an eyewitness to the JFK assassination, but he was hit with a stray bullet fragment that struck the president. And he talks about that experience with Alex coming up next, so stick around. We're on the march, the Empire's on the run, and the InfoWars Army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution, InfoWarsStore.com. Introducing Pro One, all of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gate. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Well, this week marks the 50th anniversary of the JFK assassination. We're going to be at Dealey Plaza all week reporting on the blatant censorship and the shutting down of the First Amendment there at the plaza. The official uh, commemoration ceremony will be held at Dealey Plaza, and they're erecting this fence. Only 5,000 people are allowed to come. They had to go through extensive background checks. 
they do not want anyone there that questions the official narrative. They're really trying to clamp down and just control this story. So we're going to be there reporting from the ground and causing a little bit of a ruckus, if you will. But the interview that's coming up next, uh, James Tague, he was actually at Dealey Plaza when JFK was assassinated and he was struck by a bullet fragment. He has been uninvited from the 50th anniversary ceremony for the JFK assassination and he talks about that with Alex Jones. The third person shot and the Warren Commission didn't even know about him until later, and then he testified. This is how controlled the FBI whitewash was. And he joins us uh, now, sir. Thank you for coming on. Good morning. Well, well, sir, you've got the floor. Talk about your experience that day, your book, where you break down what really happened, and, and then now uh, this attack on free speech. It looks like the shadow government didn't just kill our president. Fifty years later, they're killing our First Amendment. Well, I... Uh my new book, uh, LBJ and the Kennedy Killing, <clears throat> uh, I start from the first to go all the way through. A lot of people, well, let me back up, people's 15 years old then or 65 now. So a lot of information uh, that was not known I uh, put into a book, 101 stories in 101 chapters. Now, let me go back to that day. I was there by accident. I uh, just got stopped in traffic, wasn't planning on seeing Kennedy. <clears throat> and uh, my car was stopped under the triple underpass, got out, walked four or five steps to get into the uh, uh, visibility of the Dealey Plaza. No more than done that, and somebody throws a firecracker. Pop. Well, that's what it sounded like, but it was the first shot. And I'm thinking to myself, what kind of idiot would be throwing a firecracker with the president driving by? No more than get those thoughts out of my mind and crack, crack of two rifle shots. Something stings me in the face. Well, that catches my attention. Uh, there's something going on. Anyway, I'm standing there for a moment stunned. A man in a suit comes running up to me. It turns out he's a deputy sheriff named Buddy Walters. And he asked me, he says, what's going on down here? I says, I don't know. And we stand there for a moment and notice that the motorcycle policeman's talking to a couple of people, what is now known as the grassy no. We wait for traffic to clear, which had been released after the motorcade and get across the street just in time to hear this man sobbing. His head exploded, his head exploded. And the policeman says, whose head? And he says, the president's. And I'll never forget uh, Deputy Sheriff Buddy Wallace turning to the grass. There beside the, the, the sidewalk and kicking the grass with his toe, hard as he could, damn, damn, damn. He looked up at me, and he says, you got blood on your face. And I reached up and palmed my hand, sure enough. And I remember something stinging me, doing the crack, crack of two rifle shots. Uh, buddy asked me, he says, where were you standing? And I says, back over where you ran up to me. And so we wait for traffic to clear again, and before we can get over to the point between Maine and Commerce, very narrow, right there before it goes under the underpass. Uh, but he's because says, look here on the curb. You could see from across the street a bullet mark on the curb. And uh, we uh, stand there, look at it. We both felt of it, tried to line it up. And finally, we go back across the street where <clears throat> people start together and comparing notes what just happened. I'm asked to uh, stick around. They want to uh, get a statement from me. Well, about 20 minutes after the shooting, I suddenly remember my car still sitting out in the street. So I go jump in it to move it, get it out of the way, and repark, and I couldn't. Uh, crowds of people had uh, suddenly uh, come on uh, Dealey Plaza, and it was a traffic jam. So I drove on down to... Uh, the police station told the desk sergeant was there. 
he sent me up to uh, homicide, and I sat in homicide for perhaps 30 minutes until a sergeant walks in, or detective named Gus Rose walks in. And uh, the detective takes out a uh, yellow pad and takes briefly the notes. It was very simple. I just got stopped in traffic and and something that uh, stung me on cheek, blah, blah, blah. And as we're about to end up, there's a noise there at the door of homicide, and two policemen bring a man in in handcuffs behind his back. And uh, Detective Rose says, what you got there? And one of the policemen says, this is the man that killed the policeman over in Oak Cliff a while ago. So anyway, I was excused at that point and went home. But that night, uh, I noticed on TV the man they'd brought in while I was there was Lee Harvey Oswald. Now, at that point, I sat down that evening for some reason, I don't know why, uh, and uh, pulled out a spiral notebook and wrote down everything I could remember from that day. Well, I know why. That's common sense. You just saw the president get executed, and you want to keep everything fresh. That's exactly what I would do. Well, I, 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 that's what I did. Still got it today. And uh, uh, anyway, through the years, I uh, collected a lot of notes, this, that, and the other. Put it out of my mind for years. This was something in the past. Didn't, didn't, uh, did not allow it to interfere with my family or my career. But my wife kept a lot of notes and did it in the books. And in 1988, <clears throat> I'm on a plane going to New York. And get to talking to the lady next to me. It turns out she's Madeline Brown, Lyndon Johnson's mistress for 21 years. The tale she told me was almost unbelievable. I uh, absorbed it, put it in the back of my mind, but did not let it get to me. And by the way, I knew her and interviewed her in person many times, and she even had a son with LBJ. Stephen. Absolutely, and I had family that lived in Austin uh, at the time, and uh, I mean, pretty much everybody then, it was such a small town, knew about LBJ and the things he was up to, but it's on record that that really was his mistress. That's correct. That's correct. Uh, but anyway, uh, she had a long tale to tell, which I'm sure you've heard, you probably heard what she had to say. No, but recap it for folks. Well, you know, that uh, about him getting drunk and telling her, uh, the planning and things that uh, they did. That and we can't say it on air because it's profane, but, you know, that son of a you-know-what will never embarrass me again after tomorrow. Well, that, that's correct. Well, that that was uh, that goes back to the meeting the night before uh, the assassination uh, at the uh, Clint Murkison house. All right. Well, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. We'll be here again tomorrow, 7 p.m. Central. But please check out our footage. We'll be at Dealey Plaza Thursday, Friday, and even Saturday. And we're going to be reporting live from there. You can watch that at prisonplanet.tv. And, of course, you can always share your username and password with up to 10 other people at the same time. So go ahead and share that live transmission from Dealey Plaza. Thank you so much, and we'll see you tomorrow. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show.